Hey guys, Brent Hall, Build Show, talking today about the Kell House. I'm in Wichita Falls, Texas. We're looking at an early 1900s house, neoclassical, beautiful example of kind of the richest guy in town. A lot of cool things we can learn from these houses, the historic houses as we study them. The brickwork, the trim work, the coffered ceiling, the use of woods, the cut of woods, right? All awesome stuff that we can learn from as we study historic houses. Come join me here on the Build Show. We're at the Kell House, right? This is an early 1900s house, neoclassical. That's why you see those tall columns on the on the front there. Pretty common house style around the turn of the century that you'd have this classical element. You'll see some arts and crafts details inside. There's a French room inside. Kemp and Kell, who really founded Wichita Falls, were really interesting guys. I mean, they were fabulous businessmen. They basically came to a, a middle of nowhere and basically built Wichita Falls. Uh, the railroad they bring here, it was a unique period of time where the, if if enterprising guys come up and show up like that, they can do amazing things. And this town is a testament to their business acumen and their ability to build. So uh, what we're going to look at is the Kell House today, the top house, the best house in the neighborhood, built in the early 1900s. Come join me. One of the great things about this house standing out here on the front porch is we get to see some of the techniques of building. Now I talked to you about bricks and if you watch the Georgian video, what you're seeing is an example of a very industrial brick. Okay, so that's why you have this even color. The grout lines are fairly thin, about an eighth of an inch. And what they've done is they've added a pencil detail to this brick. And what they would have done was they would have had sanded lime mortar, right? But on this pencil detail, we used probably straight lime in order to, to craft that fine little detail. Now, notice they have it horizontally and vertically, right? So this would have been an extra little emphasis, a little, a little detail that would have showed that this house was very well refined. Bricks would have been very well made. The even color would have spoken to the fact that these were a, a very high quality product. No blending, straight color, the, the pencil details even shaded to be the same color as the brick, so it reads as this big red mask, which is pretty cool. Uh, high-end detail and a high-end element that would have shown you know, how well crafted this house was. For you building geeks, right, there's some great details in here because these are the details that we're oftentimes copying and using for our houses. Notice this beam ceiling, right? Awesome beam ceiling with the lights inside the beams here. You've got all stain grade woods in here. So this is stain grade quarter sawn oak. Notice this beautiful arched stairway, right? You've got two small arches on either side. Remember I talked to you about the rule of threes that you've got this, this bigger entrance. You know that there's this grand stairway, right? All quarter sawn oak. This would have been like one of the finer houses built in this era, in this area, right? And so the materials used in here are super high end and the products and the like the the ionic capital there on that on that column just the quarter sawn oak the, the stairway the balusters all those different things are super high end super well done beam ceiling notice the stenciling that's going underneath there notice there's no entry vestibule you enter right into this main room where you've got this incredible fireplace this great tile the dining room behind but this is a a, a room meant to wow right this is a room meant to kind of show off and, and be really awesome come in here i'm going to show you something on this plaster ceiling which is pretty cool this is be the formal living room. Notice it's kind of a, a French look, right? And this whole house is kind of neoclassical, but we're gonna see a number of different influences. That's really an arts and crafts, Beaux-Arts kind of thing, mix of different styles. That mantle is a very French mantle, but look what's happened up here, okay? We've got a beautiful you know, crown, right? Which is with a dental, an egg and dart, a bead and reel up in that cornice, right? But here we're seeing kind of the problems up here at the top. And basically this room would have been made out of plaster, okay? And so that crown detail wasn't made out of wood and it's pretty typical and common in this period that you would have a room like this where it was upgraded. Now, there is a part of this house that's been added. And I'm gonna show you this study that's been added later. And so we're gonna start questioning whether, you know, some of these arts and crafts elements and what would have been changed, when it would have been changed, uh, what's going on, because 
as we talk about this house, especially, there's a lot of sleuthing that's going to go on of when was this built? When did this get here? What, what's going on? You're going to see a lot of different things in the kitchen. If you just watch my kitchen video and the history of it, you'll really be able to tell in that space. Here's one that is, is a really elegant room, but we're seeing some of the challenges and why we're here. We're doing a restoration. This foundation is going to be firmed up. This is going to be a fairly easy repair here on that plaster work, but there's a lot of more cool stuff to do. Let me show you in here. So very formal dining room, right? We've got a fireplace here in the corner, marble fireplace, really wonderful. Look at these curtains, okay? Look at the, the, the separation between these rooms. Not only would this have been a pocket doors, but sometimes you'll see on nice houses like this, the sign of these old tracks where the curtains would have been closed between the different rooms. That's what's happening here. You see that, you see evidence of that in sometimes these historic houses, but not really the curtains there. Now, because this is a museum house, we've got the settings and all this kind of how life would have been lived at the time. The other cool thing is you have a front stair, back stairs, right? This kind of servants area versus the other life. Quarter sawn white oak, right, on the face of this door. But look what happens right here. It turns to pine, right? Because now we're about to go back into a servants area and that area is much more servanty. <laughs> and so they wouldn't have used as nice materials back there. Okay, we're on the back porch, right? This is where the servants would have come in. This is the back kitchen. You're gonna see it's all paint grade. And we're really looking at, we have three generations of kitchen cabinets and how things have changed, right? This is apparently the original kitchen cabinets, right? This is kind of the arts and crafts version. You have these little cabinet doors. Notice the beadboard back, wood countertop, right? These drawers with these cup pulls, right? Very simple, very rustic, paint grade, simple cabinets, right? This is the earliest cabinet. Now, if we go in here, we're looking at another cabinet that was originally in the parlor of the house. And when they changed the parlor, they, they used these cabinets. Now, these are much more decorative. You notice you've got leaded glass in here. This was originally stained. Now it's now it's been painted. One really cool detail, look at this little thing, a little push button thing to open the door, right? So still of the period, but this would have been in a nicer part of the house, right? So you have early kitchen cabinets, paint grade. This is a more decorative furniture quality cabinet that would have been in the parlor. And then we come over here and we see these 1940s, 1950s cabinets with the plywood doors, the upper cabinets all the way to the ceiling, right? Now, originally in this kitchen, there was a ice box and we'll see it from the outside, but there was a chute where the, the ice man would come and he'd put a ice block right from the back outside the wall into your ice box, right? So that's how it worked. They didn't bring any of that into the house. There was on nice houses like this, they would have been able to access that from the outside so that you could keep things cool, right? So look at the floors, like right? linoleum floors, okay? So we've got rustic, simple details, pretty open. This would have been a real workspace in here. The other fun thing is that we've actually even got a steel cabinet here. Remember we looked at the Youngstown kitchen and there's also a Chamberlain kitchen that, that specialized in making steel cabinets, which is what this is, okay? This is a steel face cabinet. So this is, you know, 40s or 50s, could have come at the same time, but most likely was ordered as a separate place, a real advancement. Notice too that the cabinets are all on all three sides of the walls. That doesn't happen until the 30s or 40s. And so we see all kinds of different areas here. Even this, this old venta hood, right? Where it's bending into that attic, that's you know, 40s or 50s and then 60s or 70s, right? For the electric range, right? Here we are in a space, you know, 20 by 12, and we see almost 70 years of cabinetry, right? And kitchens all in one space, which is really pretty cool. We're now coming out of that servants area back into a formal area. You'll notice that we've got a pine door, right? Which would have sit on this side and all the trim going through here is gum, okay? Now, if you've watched some of my other videos, especially these historic houses, there are gum libraries and gum studies and things like that. There was a real hot wood in the 20s, right? Well, we know that this was added in about 25. And so we've got this really cool study in here, right? That we know was added on, right? early 1900s, now 1925, because we've got this gum space, right? This is a lot of these details and a lot of these elements, this paneled wall, I mean, we've seen it in at least three or four houses that we've done where you've got this beautiful study like this, all made out of gum, but because it's made out of gum, we know it's later, and this one, in fact, is about 1925.
Actually, this is 1941, right? This is an elevator that was added into this shaft, but it's a pretty beautiful little casework there. Notice the, the stained grade woods and everything else. We know that this was added in 1941, but we're at the stair hall, right? We're at this, this wonderful, beautiful arch. I talked to you about those pretty arches. You got two small arches, then the, the big arch. This is kind of a classical motif that they would have used this arch to identify where the main staircase is, where the, where the important thing is. Beautiful staircase that wraps up. Notice we're still with the quarter sawn oak. We've got these beautiful paneling going up. Now let me go upstairs and I'll show you some awesome details. Okay, so we're now upstairs, right? So now this wood is paint grade, right? We've got still these five panel doors, these wonderful bedrooms and stuff. I wanted to show you this bathroom though, because it's pretty awesome. I too would say that this is a 10, 20s kind of bathroom. We see the hex tile on the floor, that banding around the outside is pretty typical in the 20s. Cool built-in furniture, awesome pedestal sink. Notice this here. Okay, so sometimes in these houses, instead of doing actual tiles on the wall, they actually scratched tiles into the plaster work. And that's what they've done here, where they would have had a tool that came across and they would have come down and marked these things out. So oftentimes you think, well, we've got tile walls here. It's actually plaster that's been scratched into to create this kind of subway tile, which is what we call it today, look. Pretty cool bathtub. All this stuff is really awesome. Cool space in here. A lot of clues as far as when these things were made, when these things were built. All right, so as I'm dating this space, right, we're looking at a lot of different millwork things. I, I, I wanna point out this, you know, this kind of thing, right? You've got five panel doors, which is, you know, five panel doors kind of stop appearing in the catalogs around 1900, 1910, okay? So this would have been the last era that, if you followed us with Windsor or Cukin, you know that this kind of classical craftsman look, right, is, is kind of Victorian arts and crafts and they've just changed this, this cap in detail, this little bead detail. We still have a plinth block there. And then mirror doors. Mirror doors start showing up in the catalogs around 1900, 1910. So we know that this is kind of an original door to that period. Now, this mantle is pretty awesome. Remember this house is kind of neoclassical arts and crafts. But what are these details here, okay? That are like dentals, but what they really are is gute, okay? Now, if you have, you've studied the classical orders, you'll know that you have these triclefs in the frieze, right, which is in this section here. And then underneath it are these little teeth called gute. And gute were thought to mimic historically the nails that would have gone on and held the architrave and the beam together. So they've, what they've done here is they've done a really classical mantle, right? We've got a, a column, right? This really pretty entablature, right? There's your architrave, there's your frieze. You got a panel in the frieze, then your cornice up here. This little bow front, it's a very handsome fireplace mantle, but this little detail here kind of gives away that neoclassical look and helps us kind of understand what was going on here. Again, fire is a big problem in this period of time. That's why there's not open fireplaces. There's these gas units that sit in pretty tile surround. So awesome stuff in this space. Really original, really cool. I want to show you the front porch. So the Kell House, right? We're in, we're in Wichita Falls. A great example of a smaller town, the richest guy in town, right? Building a great house. Great details inside, kind of cutting edge in that the arts and crafts element that we've got. Not complete. House is redone a number of different times. We have with Beaux-Arts rooms with French detailing the 15, 16. We have a gum paneled room, 1920s, right? Uh, the different things in the kitchen, right? This house really evolved over time. It's now a museum house. It's an awesome example of, of great building, small town, and kind of the things that would have been done early 1900s here in America. Fun stuff for us to learn too, guys, right? Seeing how they built in different eras and different periods, the plaster work in that one room, this masonry work, the woodwork, that coffered ceiling, the great stairway, the use of the, the, the woods, different sides and different woods, all good details that we should be learning from as we study historic houses. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and Facebook. I'm Brent Hall, thanks for watching.